Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a horizontal box plot using Microsoft Excel. Um, and this is a lot more tricky than creating a vertical one, so it's going to be a long video. Um, this is version 1. Uh, I have another video where I explain a slightly shorter version. Um, not really sure if it's that much shorter, but where in this one I'm going to be using a stacked bar chart as the main trick to get this done. While in the other video, in version 2, I'm using a, a scatter plot uh, and only a scatter plot. Alright, um, just make sure you really want it horizontal because uh, if you're okay with having it vertical, the box plot, then it's going to be a lot easier. And then you can just watch the video on that and you'll notice that that goes fairly straightforward. So, anyways, um, I've also made it additional difficult by having negative values, so uh, because that also um, comes with some additional things to take care of. All right, the first thing to do is to uh, create a, a stack bar chart, uh, and for those who will first need the quartiles, I'm not going to explain what the quartiles are. I'm going to be using the quartile inclusive. Um, there's a whole debate on which one is better, but um, I'll use the inclusive one. Simply select the whole range, and the one I want is actually the first one, so 1. And then also, of course, the quartile uh, inclusive, and the same range, A. As you might notice, I'm using a semicolon to separate uh, parameters, and you might be using a comma, so you might want to adjust that for your own data. Uh, I have my data, by the way, in column A. It's not that many, it's only 28 data points. Right, the next thing is then the interquartile range, which is simply the difference between these two. So that's going to be 7 minus minus 6, which should be 7 plus 6, which should equal 13. Now, we might also have outliers, so those that are so far away that we might want to exclude them. Uh, there are different variations on what the criteria should be for an outlier. I'm setting it to 1.5. Alright, so now we need to actually get the starting point of this whisker. Um, so the, the left one. The starting point, which is not the same as the minimum, because we might have those outliers, so we should exclude those. So for that, we can actually use min ifs, min the minimum value if the following conditions are met. We do want the minimum of the temperatures. The criteria is also going to be in here, and it should be that the value is actually greater than or equal to. And then we add to that that it should be the uh, first quartile minus our factor of the interquartile range multiplied with the interquartile range itself. All right, and that should give us the minus 10 that we also see here. Now, this first box is fairly straightforward. That actually, this box uh, starts at the first quartile. So we can simply refer to that. The second box starts at the median. So we can say equals median. And then of all my data. The uh, sorry, the second whisker, the upper whisker, starts at the third quartile, so we can simply say and that. And we also need to know where that will actually end, and similarly as with the first whisker where the starting point was difficult, the end point is slightly tricky for the second whisker. So, in this case, I'm going to be using max ifs, again column A, uh, as the max range, and then again the criteria range is also column A, and in this case it should be less than or equal to, oh, or equal to, and and then the third quartile plus my interquartile range multiplied by the outlier factor that we set. So that should give me that 10, which is over here. 
All right, so far so good. Um, now we do have something where the everything starts the first whisker at a negative. That's going to create some problems. So we're going to make it positive by simply adding this um, uh, this minus 10. So we're going to add 10 to everything, uh, to all of them. So basically we're shifting the whole box a little bit to the right. So what I could say is, well, if this value and then F4 to fix this, so when I copy paste it down, it's not going to change. Uh, so then it puts dollar signs around everything. If that's less than zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to take this value and then we're going to subtract the same value because minus minus then becomes plus. Uh, fix that one. Uh, in all other cases, semicolon, so simply then use that one. So this should give me zero and I should be able to copy this simply down. So we have the whole everything shifted to the right. And now all these values are of course positive. Um, we need the width of each of those elements. So we have the width of this first uh, whisker, the width of the first box, the width of the second box and the width of the uh, second whisker. So the width of the first um, whisker is actually the difference between these two. So I can simply say that's going to be this one minus uh, that one. All right, I can copy paste this down or use the auto fill handle. And I do need one extra one that I'm going to be using later for the, um, for the whiskers, uh, sorry, for the outliers. All right. Next, uh, we're going to create our chart. So I did write down all the steps here. But I'm just going to show you those steps. Um, I'll leave a link to this file in the description below uh, to my website where you can download it. Um, we're going to select all these widths and then from insert, uh, I'll go for a column. Uh, and actually I'm going to for a 2D bar and make sure you select the stacked version. Not the this one which is 100%, no, there's the second one, the stacked 2D bar. And make sure you go for bar, not column, because we wanted it horizontal. Alright, so these are just uh, frequencies as it were, or actually those values. Um, we don't want them separately, we want them all on top of each other. So in order to do that, what we can actually do is simply in the chart design ribbon, select switch row column, and now they're all nicely added up to each other. Okay, so this first one should actually be a whisker. So it doesn't look like much like a whisker. So what we can do is we can uh, click on this and um, what we also actually need to do is, yeah, now we click on this and we go for the instill in the chart design. We go for add an element and there are error bars and we go for more error bars options. Now this is going to be a minus and it's going to be a custom and we're going to specify the width and we leave this positive error as is and tap to go to negative and that's where we enter the width of it and we click on OK and now we should have a nice little bar going from here to here. For the upper whisker we actually not going to select where it needs to be placed we're going to go one before it and we're going to do the same thing we're going to say add chart element error bars and then again more error bar options. Uh, if you don't see it right away, just click on this one here, the error bar options. Um, in this case, it's going to be a plus. And we're going to customize that. We're going to specify the value. We now enter as a positive error the width of that uh, whisker, which was uh, 3. And we leave the negative error as, uh, as is. And we click on OK. And now you can see that it nicely fills up this yellow one. So even though it's actually put on this one, the error goes up on that one. Okay. Um, 
Now this doesn't look like much yet, so what we can do is simply right click on this and we can say well we don't need a fill color for this, so we can change that to no fill. For this one we can say well we uh, might want to have a fill color, let's use this one. And the outline needs to be automatic, so we get a nice box around it. Same goes for this one, right click and say well fill color, same color as the other one and an outline to automatic and this one the whisker doesn't need a fill so uh, no fill and now we have something that already starts to look like a box block all right um, we do need our outliers um, so we need to find our outliers and those will be actually added as this box and then we may have some more work cut out for us so to find the outliers, what we could do is we can go all the way back, and that's why I left some space here, and we could say in general equals uh, if, and then we go this one is smaller than, and then it needs to be smaller than our first quartile, minus, and then our factor, which is the uh, multiplied with the interquartile range, so the interquartile range, and then the factor. If that is true, then it should actually list this one. Else, uh, what we can also do is check the upper one if um, this one is greater than the third quartile plus, and then again, the interquartile range multiplied with the outlier factor. Then, semicolon, it should also return this one. In all other cases, just leave it blank. So, two times the quotation signs. Now, I need to be careful. I need to actually add quite a lot of add everything with an F in my uh, formula. I need to put it around the uh, dollar signs. So, I can simply use the F4 trick. If you press F4, it actually puts dollar signs. You could have also done this with an OR, then you would not have to use twice the IF, but okay, it's uh, so I can now just copy paste this down, and I'll notice that these are my three um, outliers so minus 30, 40, and 35. I actually need to store those separately somewhere, so I'm going to do that over here. Uh, they were I can just copy them, Control C, and then paste uh, special with values only. So where are my paste values? And I just need to add in here a height. So I'm just going to put in one. So as if this is an X value and this would be a Y value. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this extra bar. Don't worry if you... Um, if you have difficulty selecting it, I could actually do it on any of them and just select the change series chart type and then in the bottom here go for the last one, that's series 5 and that one's going to become a XY scatter one and you might notice it actually putting it on a secondary axis and we click on OK now it just puts a dot here, so and we haven't actually given it these outliers yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the chart, and under chart design there is select data, and we're going to that series 5, and we're going to say edit this. Now well I can leave the series name blank, uh, my x values are those outliers, and the y values are these three. Okay, all right, and click on OK. So now we have the dots, we have the uh, the box, but it all looks a little bit out of uh, place. So let's see how we can actually fix that. Uh, first of all, uh, we might want to put uh, this uh, in the center. So if it's a height of one, we might want to just click on this one um, on the vertical axis. Um, and we can go to access options and then set this to 2 so that at least those points are at the right height. 
Um, another thing that we might want to, uh, first of all, there's also here some extra values. We can just select this and press delete, so now it's gone. Um, the numbers are still off because this was a zero and it should be minus 10, remember? So in order to solve that, we go to add chart element and at access, we now have the option to add a secondary horizontal one. So the secondary horizontal one is actually used for those data points. And we're going to adjust therefore the one below it. And we started at minus 40, but we want this all to shift this whole box, the, the box and whiskers to actually shift to the left. So we're gonna um, say instead of starting at uh, minus 40, this is going to start at minus 30. So I go again to my format access, access options, and say, well, this needs to start at minus 30. And the maximum should therefore increase also by the same amount. So it was 50, so that should become now 60. So the total width is still the same. But it's all shifted, basically, the box to the left. So now the box is at the right place. You might notice we're almost done. Um, we can't actually uh, hide the other axis, so um, we want this axis actually to be hidden. But if I hide it, it actually adjusts the whole scales again. The same goes for this one. So I don't want that. So what you could do is simply actually select the axis, go to the home ribbon, and perhaps just make it color white as the font color. And the same here, make the color white. And now they look as if they are disappeared. Now, of course, we don't want this to be on top. We want this at the bottom. So when I select it, you can go to, um, poo, it's been a while, uh, at the access options under labels. You can say, well, I want this low. So it actually drops it below the, um, the chart. And we change the title to, uh, I think it was temperature. Uh, temperature it was actually made up data so not really sure what it was and there we have finally our chart if you want you can also remove the horizontal grid lines by just clicking on one of them then all of them get selected press delete and they're gone uh, if you want you can adjust the marker style uh, so you can change it to um, whatever you prefer so if you go to the marker uh, marker options you can change the type um, uh, you can say build in and then change it, the size you can change, etc. But that's how it could be done. All right, uh, that was 17 minutes. Uh, again, the vertical one is so much easier and I'm still surprised that Microsoft hasn't come up with a better solution for this. But here is one way of doing that. Thank you for watching and hope this was helpful.